welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Lens with your hosts, Jake and Scott. In this week's episode, we feature Whiskey House, and we travel down to Elizabethtown to get a sneak peek of what David Mandel and John Hargrove and the team have been doing to cook this up. So sit back and buckle in and listen to our latest episode featuring Whiskey House. Guys, how are y'all? Great. Thank you guys for coming down. Yeah, great. Thanks for having us. Uh, we really we really appreciate it. Um, and this was something we got to come to the grand announcement or grand opening a couple months ago, it seems like. Was that October? Um, and boy, has there been a lot of things <laughs> change. A few things have been built. Yeah. You well, we had the groundbreaking with the building behind us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the late groundbreaking, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, this has been a project we've heard a lot about, um, and it seems like this dream has, you know, become a reality rather quickly. So, you know, for those people who don't know about Whiskey House, when did the dream kind of start? And when, when did this dream start and when did you all actually break ground? You know, the funny thing is the dream has been alive for quite some time and it goes all the way back to when we founded and built Bardstown Bourbon Company, you know, and we learned the business and we created, you know, the first program in the state to do custom whiskey production. And, and that's when the dream began, but it wasn't until, you know, we all got together, myself, John Hargrove, Dan Lind, who's, uh, we're all partners in this. Uh, and it was, you know, early 2021 when a, a number of things happened, you know, Bardstown Bourbon Company sold, which was a, was a wonderful thing for, for many of us. And uh, we got together and we saw there was a unique opportunity in the marketplace to really take uh, the program and a, a lot of the, the learnings we had at Bardstown to the next level. And that was really kind of the moment that uh, the three of us came together and founded Whiskey House. Yeah, I'll just back that, that up to how far we've come today. February 2022 was really when we incorporated, right? Mm. We secured funding and broke ground August of that same year. Wow. So August 22 is when we broke ground. And so at today, starting up July 2024, it'll be under two years that we've started to move over 450,000 cubic yards of dirt to what you see today uh, here. It's a whirlwind. It is. It, it's it, that is actually a story in and of itself, which we probably can't do uh, in today's uh, conversation. But I'll tell you that is the crux of that piece of the story is an incredible relationship that we have with Busick Construction, which goes back to when we found a Bardstown Bourbon Company. But even more so uh, is John Hargrove taking everything that he has learned throughout his entire career and being able to design and build a facility at the same time in parallel with a construction partner that's able to move that quickly while bringing other other specialties in line. It is absolutely remarkable. Somebody that has you know, been obviously part of the process, but watching it, mm -hmm. uh, it's an incredible piece of the story and someday it will get fully told. Yeah. And I think it's, it's amazing, right? Like I was like looking at securing finances for like building a house. And that was going to take a long time, like, right, to, to do what you all did on this, what, 170 acre property um, is absolutely insane. Uh, and the progress that's been made in the last seven months has been wild. And a lot of people I know are probably a little, I don't know, they're interested in what Whiskey House is going to be. And we were chatting about this through you know the conversation John and I were uh, as we took a tour of the facility and it's going to be state of the art, but the idea of contract distillation, right? A lot of people are, are foreign to that. They think of what happened, uh, you know, at, at, at Bardstown and, and all of that, but contract distillation isn't new, right? And I think it's new to the United States of America on a large scale production. Would you like, and so why did you go contract versus we want to build our own brand? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've been in the business for quite some time and this is a piece of the business doing custom whiskey production that we truly love. Because at the end of the day, what we're building here, this is a customer service business. It's customer service focus. It is about innovation. And then we're layering on technology that is enhancing the customer service experience tremendously in giving our customers the information at their fingertips about their product, all the way to being able to tell very deep, rich stories about their product. But 
you know, just stepping back, we love this business. And when we started Bardstown Bourbon Company, it was one of those areas that we really wanted to take to the next level. We never got an opportunity to do that. And one of the things we found is that we couldn't do that because you actually need a different facility. You need to start with the idea in mind because when I found at Bardstown, we actually – the idea for custom whiskey production evolved as we were designing the facility. And so you end up kind of starting from a different place, adding on here, adding on there. But when you take everything that you've learned for the last decade and you then start with that proposition, and we're going to create the most state-of-the-art facility for custom whiskey production with advanced food manufacturing you know, principles, you design and make it extremely flexible. You design a very different facility when you start with that frame of mind. And that's what John did. And that's what, that was the approach. Yeah. And I would say when he said what John did, I'd say it first starts with the team that we built from our GC and music construction, m and Electric, Shardine, Lions Engineering. And then the tech piece that he also mentioned, uh, we had a critical hire in Roger Henley, who's our VP of Engineering and Technology, uh, to really take what we had strategically had, a, you know, a thought leader in this space, and he's really taken it and formulated what you're seeing today and the plans that we talked about today. Yeah, all the instrumentation, all the data collection. Um, that's not such the hard part. How do you package this up? How do you mine that? And how do you present that to a contract customer in a way that they understand to where they can really make business to business decisions that impact uh, their brand or business uh, specifically? So the team that we built, we have 14 full time hires, uh, basically all our management team as of today. Then we have to go out in the next 60 to 90 days and hire another 45 people uh, to round us out uh, to get to that July <laughs> start date. Yeah. So construction is one thing. Building the team is probably the most important aspect, and it's the team that we have built from day one is what what's got us to this point today. Yeah, and I'd add to that. I mean, <clears throat> and we we saw this when we found a Bardstown. The team, as John said, is everything. We are building the best team in American whiskey, hands down. I have no problem saying that. The fourteen people that John referenced are absolutely experts, hands down in every area of that they focus on. And the team, we are have people coming out of the woodwork now. Um, and it's really, it's truly a humbling, humbling experience to have people wanting to be part of this. So really it's a, now it's about picking the right people to fit in the culture that we are building. And the culture we're building is one that's a customer service focused uh, company where you have to start with the employee first. If the employee is treated well, mm. if you create a great culture, that ultimately then filters down to the customer. And so that's how we approach these things. And uh, we're really excited about it. Yeah. As you all take that approach, right? It's it, customer first, right? And helping their their dreams become you know, true reality, right? Some of these brands that you'll be working with are very well established. It's really about that path to whiskey, as we kind of talked about. It's not about investor barrels. It's about creating uh, or elevating their brand, right? Um, and so as you go through that, right? This wouldn't be possible unless you had partners to do that. So what's that been like to secure, um, you know, the right partners to get Whiskey House rolling um, to, to set up the future success of the, the contract distillation that's going to happen here? Yeah, absolutely. And when you talk about the right partners and the right brands, it really is about, you know, making those kinds of choices. And what we, what, you know, we're offering for our customers and what they're looking for, a very significant problem we're solving in the marketplace is customers are looking for not only great customer service, innovation, flexibility, but they're looking for a long-term partner where they are guaranteed to be with us with no concerns about getting squeezed out, pushed out. And they're not in a facility that has its own brands or running its own hospitality, which always has an inherent conflict. Because the question ultimately comes that becomes, and I don't care what the facility is, you know, are you focusing on me? Or are you focusing on yourselves? It's only a matter of time till this facility gets sold. And then what happens to us? And so we're taking all of that out. Uh, this is it's closed to the public. You asked why we won't have our own brands. That's why. It's not that we don't love the branded business. What we actually are providing our customers in many ways is the knowledge and the know-how from everything we did in creating the entire brand and the liquid innovation plan at Bardstown and, the, the, and our, our prior spirits businesses. We're also able to help them and provide that insight as well. Mm. And, and so going to that, right, the right partners are also going to ask for custom creation of a lot of, of things because um, – 
you know, we, we've seen the barrel finish craze, like that has been part of it, but now it's kind of getting to the nerdy details. Like I want that custom mash bill. I want to try different heirloom grains and all of that. So how is your system going to account for the unique varietals of grain and being able to produce multiple hundreds of mash bill opportunities for your customers? Yep. That's a great question. So I'd start out by traditionally contract. You have a menu, 21% rye bourbon, 36% rye bourbon, 95% rye whiskey, right? Uh, which one do you want? Uh, we are building in on a capital scale, on a software scale and a customer service scale to break down each part of the process in production, starting with raw materials and then into the production uh where we start is grain procurement, what type of grains, what varietals. We have strategic partners in our barrel cooperages, in our grain providers, in our yeast providers, in our nutrient providers, in our enzyme providers. So we really take a brand that comes to us and they can be as technical as they want or they can, they can have that menu style that they like, right? Mm. Uh, but we will give them every option uh, on both ends of the spectrum uh, from a custom, customizable standpoint, right? So um, they can really come in and build from, you know, grain profiles to mashing sequencing, you know, to low infusion cooking uh, or high 200 plus uh, on the cook side and everything in between. And we capture all that data across the board. And our pre-production form is really where it starts. We're sitting down with brands right now and we go over 50 plus points in the production process uh, to really try to figure out what they want and how they want their stuff produced produce with Whiskey House of Kentucky. So it's been a great eye-opening experience. We've actually learned a lot sitting down, uh, sitting down with technical teams, master distillers, brand managers, brand owners, company owners. So it's been a really great process. And that customer service piece that David um, uh, really hit hit on, we're, we're stepping in this space where they haven't seen this before, yeah. how customizable that we're starting with. And that goes back to the facility too, because if you don't have the facility and you don't have the infrastructure, and you guys got a chance to see that. You saw the property you sit on, you see the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, whether it's the water supply, whether it's the rail, electrical, sewer. You have to have all these components to do you know, what John is mentioning. And what John's talking about is advanced food manufacturing for whiskey distilling. And that's where, that's John's background. Um, that's where that's where we're taking this. And so to be able to you know say to a customer, we can do 500 barrels as a minimum, but we're doing it on a massive system. And the system is designed so that you're not interrupting in any way the consistency of the pressures across the system. I know, again, I'm getting a little technical here too, but the point is great whiskey is produced through a massive system with great controls, you know, mm -hmm. and even in our former facility, you know, you're robbing one side of the facility steam off the still to move. That's because we didn't design things that way. But now this design is so unique, it's all thought through. So you're providing the highest quality, the greatest consistency, but we got tremendous flexibility in the smaller runs that we can produce. Mm, yeah. So the benefit there is you guys have the opportunity to help a new brand start up, but you also have the opportunity to, you know, help your existing brands that can help replicate what they've already done in the marketplace. Absolutely. So our customers look like it's a multinational, international uh, to small craft and non-distillery producers. So we really deal with everybody out there in this space. And with those, you know, the large strategics have technical teams. They know exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And so they come in here, we can work side by side and we can produce a gold standard of what they're looking for. And then we have a small craft producer, non-distillery producer that comes in that's really brand focused. And they really hand us the keys and be like, hey, I need a great liquid. I need a great 36% rye bourbon mm -hmm. to supplement the brand I already have out there in one or two markets and and we can do that too yeah i, I think that's what's going to be really interesting is the ability to help that craft producer or help the npd tell a different story right i think a lot of people have grown tired of a certain mash bill hitting the market over and over and over again and the whiskey consumer has gotten smarter they have gotten more enthusiastic and they're tired of like why is my bottle and i know it's the same mash bill over and over again with seven different labels why is it 70 dollars when i can go buy a bottled and bond product for four dollars or five dollars or, or like 40 like 40 dollars versus 70 you you're raising a very interesting point and that uh the what you're talking about there that challenge is 
uh, been exacerbated over the last couple of years, and we really haven't seen yet the full impact of it. And that is, you know, the the introduction in a very large way of the investor barrel. And so, mm-hmm. yep. you know, you have hundreds of thousands of barrels being produced out there of very similar liquid. And so, as that tries to come to market, and again, liquid is only as valuable as its opportunity to go into a brand. That whiskey is not worth anything unless it can go into a bottle and be sold. You might as well dump it out. And so. It, that's where it ultimately has to go to. Mm-hmm. So for brands, you know the the need to be differentiated, the need to stand out, the need to tell a more rich, you know, thoughtful story about your product and the transparency. That's what we're offering, um, and that's where I think you're going to see a lot of brands if they haven't yet are going to continue to track whether it's with different line extensions because as that liquid in the hundreds of thousands of barrels ultimately tries to make its way to the market the need to stand out is very important and you know what are what are investor barrels not interested in what we're doing at whiskey house which is why we're not doing we're not doing pure investor barrel uh production you know we you, for for bar for uh, whiskey house you know you've got to be have a brand or a direct pathway of that liquid to the brand you know, to work with us because otherwise, you know, it's really not, it doesn't fit in our program anyway. Yeah. I think the other thing that's really interesting is 500 barrels. Like that is a sizable investment. Don't get me wrong, but some of the the contracts have gotten so big because their space is so limited, right? Like I think being able to help that small craft brand that's got their funky pot still that they may want to like have more of a column still to blend with, right? Like that gives them the opportunity to scale their brand a little bit more high West style, right? Where they have partnered with, you know, their own production in, in Utah and MGP, right? So I think that's what's unique here is it can help the small one grow and grow and grow. And then maybe six, seven years down the road, they're producing their own bottled and bond rye whiskey like High West did. And I'm using that as an example because I think that's one of the cool things you all could do is help a brand grow like in that standpoint. Right. And I want to add to that. So 500 minimal uh, on the customizable side. Yeah. We can tack on a small craft producer or a non-distiller producer that's 20 or 30 barrels, we can tack them onto a, a larger mash bill run and bring them into our contract system as well. Mm-hmm. So we, we want to try to be uh, a provider for everybody that's out there. Wow. That's that's big. Because I know a lot of people want want that. Like They're just missing that 36% rye bourbon to like round out their program or whatever. And I think that's super unique. And, and one of the other things, we talked about this prior to, but the cost of a barrel was driven up over the last several years. Um, you know, you could say maybe four, three, four years ago, it was like 700 bucks for a barrel. Now it's well over a thousand sometimes. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and so, you know, how are you helping them navigate the investment and the, and the conversation in that? Because it's no small dollar amount to get into whiskey and, and to, to scale it long. It's a very simple answer. Uh, you know, our pricing uh, is designed to be fair. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. Um, It's fair because we want to be the long term producer and we will be the long term production partner for our customers. We view this as a long term relationship. This isn't get as much as you can for every single barrel Mm. uh, going out the door. That's the philosophy of some distilleries. Um, It is certainly not ours. And again, everything that we are doing here is focused on the brand and the customer experience. For example, you know, we talk about the facility being closed to the public, but it's wide open for our customers. So we have spaces in our facility. The entire facility is programmed for this experience. So you come in, we have our whiskey library where we sit with our customers and we think about what we design. We have a full room dedicated to designing liquid for our customers to be on site. We have a- an analytical lab that is designed with them in mind with uh, unique rooms for completely sensory focused uh, tasting all the way down to a whole training facility where they can bring their sales teams or distributors, you know, so they can use our facility to train. So um, the world has not seen this yet. Mm-hmm. You got a preview of it. Yeah. Um, but it's not something that we're sharing with everybody because it is for, you know, the customers. Yeah. And so as this, as we move forward here, you will see Whiskey House play that absolutely a disruptive and transformational role in this piece of the market. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. No, that's super interesting. And, and on top of that, you know, we've tied uh, the idea of conversation in, into technology into the to the whiskey house production, right? You teased it with, you know, the the food manufacturing, like trying to 
be on scale with the PepsiCo's or the Quakers of the world, but also the idea, and I've seen this kind of floated uh, on your all's LinkedIn profiles, the idea of infusing artificial intelligence into that. So can you talk about the the play that technology and artificial intelligence will help you all um, get information for yourselves to produce A, better whiskey, and then B, for your customer? And that's one of our biggest focuses, and it has been since day one. Um you saw all the instrumentation in there, all mm-hmm. the control valving, um, all the radar level indicators, vortex meters, uh, RTDs across the board. Um, what do we do with all that data? Um, do we sort through it manually? No. Do we look <laughs> at historical critical limits on that stuff in a very efficient manner? Uh, that would take uh, a labor of love to sort through all that data. <laughs> so what we can do is now introduce AI into the process and we have since applied for and received grants from Microsoft to help out with this to where That's AI awesome. can help us mine that data, turn it into correlation, causation, what causes certain things to happen, not only at the end state of bourbon, what maximizes mashing? What are the maximizable conversion rates? What are the best raw materials to use? What's that best temperature in mashing? Mm. What's the best temperature in fermentation to you know to produce uh, one of those congener profiles that just produces award-winning whiskey? So what that allows us to do is to really leverage the AI component and start getting a whole holistic view on how production, all the points of production, uh, really create uh, a world-winning, uh, world-winning uh, bourbon. Yeah, and it would, and to go one level up from that, we're 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 basically scratching the surface here on something that really has not been done before. One, because it would cost a fortune to try to put to take a, a current system and put this in place because you've got a huge amount of technical debt. It, for a lot of facilities, it wouldn't make sense for them to do it. But when you're starting out like we are. Yeah. The investment to make it now, while significant, is very much smaller than if you tried to go back and do it. So we're starting with a brand new platform, a brand new, uh, you know, some of the technologies in here are new. Some of them are, are just applied from other industries. But being able to capture that data across the entire life cycle from grain to barrels all the way out to information in the warehouses and then be able to look at it like John is saying – we don't even really fully know where this will take us. And what we're really excited about is that journey. And that is one of kind of the fundamental under, underpinnings of Whiskey House, which is that thought leadership, that curiosity, and that role we'll play in the industry, which is really also about, you know, contributing, being part of the, the whiskey community, which is what we always loved. If you remember kind of the original vision at Bardstown was a celebration of the great craft of whiskey making and bringing together the community. That was a fundamental principle that we started that company with. And so, you know, I think taking that to the next level, you know, mm. you're seeing that same, that same kind of community, mm. you know, thought leadership, bringing people together or now, not just around collaborative distilling, but now also around looking at data and questioning and thinking about, you know, how did we make this? What under what conditions did we did it require us to get there? How do you replicate it? All these really neat things that we'll be able to do. Yeah, just people, so, so the whole art of making bourbon. We respect it. It's got us where we are today, but we want to start transitioning into science across the board. Yeah. So even our first warehouse is going to be a smart warehouse loaded with instrumentation, barrel-specific instrumentation to where we start getting all those data collection points, feed it in an entire system. And when you pull a barrel out in eight years, you can see what farm the grain came from, what forest the wood came from, you know, uh, the quality metrics on the 24-hour beer chemistry when it ran through our system. And then you can par- start putting all those pieces together and you can arm a brand with all that information. And yeah. then they can start to differentiate why their bourbon is different. Why is it better? Why is it pertain to their specific story? So we arm them with a whole host of data collection points that really correlate into actionable business decisions into their brand. Well, and then you can maybe help solve the question is why is a barrel that's right next to each other from the same lot have different flavor profiles? Exactly. Bingo. Yeah, Yeah. that's absolutely right. These are going to be the fun things that we're going to be able to do. Yeah. That's the nerdy stuff that people just like, like I'm like super interested in someone finding out like, Hey, why is that same lot, same barrel, maybe even from the same tree? Why does it taste different? Um, and exactly. that is the like that is the wild question of bourbon that or whiskey in general that no one's been able to answer because it's like God did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's just kind of what it is. And the funny thing is you're seeing, you know, this this isn't new again in other industries, you know, in other advanced manufacturing. Yeah. You have this data, you know, you look at these things, it's how you become more efficient, more precise, all of that. 
we're just we're now applying it to distilling and so you're starting to see us move into as a distilling industry into that kind of next level well i think it feeds the nerdiness that people seek out like i think to start a whiskey brand i think you have to be a pretty big whiskey nerd so you're feeding the owners of the brand the information the data but then the consumer also i mean we've experienced this in the past five years of podcasting the consumer wants the nerdy details right so i think to be able to translate that from the owner who's wanting that to the ultimate consumer. And it's just not the nerdy details that benefit the brand. It's the nerdy details that you guys got to see in there. Uh, the vapor recompression, the boiler stack economizers. It helps our production efficiencies, which helps us lower cost of production, which helps us produce for that craft producer that's not looking for $1,200 a barrel. Yeah. And be able to help those smaller brands. So there was a lot of thought in how do we really cater to those smaller markets and those smaller brands that are really trying to get their foot in the door in the industry and which have some great ownership and mm -hmm. they just need a little nudge, a little help to help them out. For sure. And I'm going to take a, a wide turn here because I, I'm looking at the, we have the, the background of the aerial shots. One of the questions I posed to Scott on the way down here is, man, E-Town is booming. Whether it's the electrical battery plant that's not far away from here, it's there's another big giant manufacturing plant being built right behind you all. You know, one of the things that I, where are you going to find the help, right? Like you've talked about your leadership team being attracted down here. What's the, like the city of E-Town, like how have they wrapped your arms around this uh, down here? It, well, phenomenally well. I mean, first of all, I mean, E-Town has been, it's been incredibly uh, accommodating. Uh, the property, the infrastructure we had here, as I said, that was number one, yeah. right? Because we had to get that. If we didn't have, we weren't able to get the property with the infrastructure here, rail, you know, we have on property, which is very important for, you know, the work that we're going to be doing internationally and that competitive space, you know, massive infrastructure for electrical, sewer, water. We sit on the largest aquifer, we take 400 gallons out a minute. But then in terms of, and they've been, and Elizabethtown has been wonderful to work with. Uh, they're a huge part of why we were able to move as quickly as we did. From a, you know, from an employment standpoint, one of the, you know, one of the things that's so nice about Whiskey House too is it's a fully, basically a fully automated facility. Yeah. So when you're looking at 110,000 square foot building at, you know, 112,000 barrels day one going to 224,000 barrels and you're looking at 60, 58 employees to start and not that many more to double, you know, it's highly efficient. You know, mm -hmm. we have that workforce. You know, and we are building the best team in American whiskey. It's not hard for us to hire. It's yeah. really about picking and choosing who fits into the culture. Mm -hmm. We have a floodgate of people coming in here. You know, we've hired again, as I think we mentioned, that senior team with absolute industry experts in every single position. Yeah, that's not really an issue for us. The biggest challenge was f finding the property because I can tell you, and I love Bardstown as a community. I live there. You know, I'm very active in it. This infrastructure did not exist there. Nothing you can do about it. We could not have built this in Bardstown. We couldn't have built this facility on the property that we had for Bardstown Bourbon Company because the infrastructure there could not support what we were building. It's a totally different level. We're in another stratosphere here. And so you have to have the infrastructure in order to produce it, in order to build a facility that can fulfill the promises that we just laid out. Yeah. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And and the ability to be able to scale and not need the human capital, right? Because you have automated, you have done those things, but it's it's now about hiring the right people to produce and to deliver, you know, on what you're you're selling to your customers. A hundred percent. And then, and that starts with again the culture yeah. mm. and what we create here. And that is something that we did before. Um, those early teams at Bardstown remember that. Um, and we created a, uh, a real reputation in the industry then for creating a unique culture. It's how we were able to drive so many people to Bardstown when we started. Because I spent, and I can tell you, I spent at least 40% of my time on culture um, when I was running Bardstown. John, same thing. Our senior team, same thing. Um, and that's really important. Uh, it's important because that's how you not only attract, but retain great talent and create a customer service focused business. You can't just make that stuff up. Yeah. Um, you can't just say you're going to do it. You can't just, it's not just about pay. It's not just about benefits. It's about the culture and how you bring people together. Yeah. I was going to say the first time we posted about whiskey house, somebody commented on our feed, like, are you guys hiring? I'm like, it's not us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, I, I wish, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, it, it's, it's been really cool that people we've seen reception even when we've posted about it, which is, which has been great. The other thing around innovation we haven't talked about is your, your unique barrel houses that you all are creating, um, with, with, um, you know, with the construction company. Like, so can you walk through like why and how you all are creating these new uh, improved rick houses? Right. So when we looked at whiskey house holistically, how do we improve every part of the process? If it's improvable, right? So um, barrel aging is kind of like, I, I still consider it the wild west. Uh, so why are the sizes of whiskey house the size that they are? Is it backed by science? Is it backed by best civil structure, uh, et cetera? So uh, with the help of a, a thermal group, we are able to, you know, model up um, a great design for a warehouse uh, just from an airflow standpoint, uh, you know, to increase those frequencies at hot and cold, hot and cold on an annual basis, what size of vents you need on the channels below uh, the top uh, uh, part of the warehouses. So we've went with a longer, skinnier warehouse. Um, you haven't seen anything like it. It's a new Buzik build. Um, I have a feeling you'll be seeing some throughout the industry here in the next few years. Um, but it's a new warehouse designed to really turn that liquid over and over as much as we can from a seasonality standpoint. And not one barrel uh, or one brand gets stuck in the middle of a 58,800 barrel warehouse that's 40,000 square feet. So we go back to the consistency piece and what we've done here and the flexibility. So all 33 of our warehouses that we're going to build in the next next decade, 41,496 barrels, all 33 of them. What's that do? That provides consistency yeah. all throughout the, the maturation process for each of our customers. Not having to negotiate. Well, I don't want to be in the middle of the 58,000 barrel warehouse. How come you're putting your barrels X brand that you have the facility you own in the best places and we're stuck here. See, that's the inherent conflict you yeah. get in when you have your own brand and you're producing for others. And so it just becomes whether it is real, whether it is perceived, it is a real challenge. And that's going back to the original starting point where he asked, why are we not creating our own brands? Not because we don't love yeah. the brand of business. We do. It's very lucrative. It's very fun. We enjoy it. It's, it is hard. There's no question. But- what we really love is this is this piece of the business. In order to do this piece of the business right, you've got to it, it provide an absolute hyper focus on it, and that's what we're doing. I didn't how, even how think we, about. I didn't even yeah. think about like the real estate in a rick house. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. just being more valuable. Right. But right. it's, it's, it's like uh, you know, where do you want to be? Yeah. Well, well, well we're just going to roll it in here, and you're going to deal with it. Well, if I'm a customer, <laughs> you're negotiating. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to be in the middle of it. Well, okay. Well, guess what? Too bad. Um, because that's where you have to go. Totally different experience at uh, Whiskey about. House yeah. because everything is going to be uniform. I would just add one thing to that. So we have this uh, theoretical design backed by science, but what are we doing to validate it? Yeah, We're providing the instrumentation in our very first warehouse to start collecting all that data and getting real-time results on mm -hmm. a daily basis of the aging process yeah. of this design, and we're going to make that transparent to our customers. Yeah. No, that's pretty cool. Uh, another Interesting thought. I just had to put in my head. I don't know if you, you've thought about this, but like, would you all produce a barrel or two, right? Where you can say, hey, this is what our 21%, you know, rye would taste like, our 36%, like just to have controls for your um, people to try as they come in? Or is that something that's even on your all's radar? No, it, it absolutely is. So uh, from day one, uh, we're going to we're gonna establish a full distal library yeah. and then a full maturate library uh, also. And just not like when it's ready to dump, we're going to have distillate, six month, 12 month, 18 month, 24 month, and all these different mash bills. You saw the retain room yeah. in our in our analytical lab. It's monstrous. Yeah. Uh, but that extends out to just a full library for reference purposes 10, 20 years down the road, we can pull some of those samples and do the testing on them too. Yeah. Uh, so we can see how a distillate turned into a 15-year bourbon. And then we can look at all that instrumentation that warehousing provided and what changed that, what parts changed that. We're just not testing at the end of the cycle. We'll pull in samples all the way through. Whether our customer wants to pull a sample every month, every five, six months, every year, we can do that and package that up yeah. into their full data package that we provide them. Yeah, and then you'll be able to... Uh, really kind of outline, you know, what to expect at Whis Whiskey House from start to finish, right? which is, which is really cool. And that's was, you know, speaking of Bart, that was one of the coolest things they did was you get the distillate, then you got the six month and then you got the finished yes. product and the fusion discovery. Yeah. I thought that was one of the best tasting kits 
um, that you could do. And, so and you know where that started? That started in the lab when we would do our, you know, that whole concept started with how we dealt with our customers. Yeah. You know, from day one, that was an, that was a completely organic experience in kind of lining up. Yeah. You now you'd walk into the lab and that was like the greatest tasting experience you could have. That actually then ultimately informed the visitor's yeah, experience. Very large tasting experience too. <laughs> yeah. I think all four of us know that. Yeah. Just a so, little bit. But that was, you know, that's how we created things, and, yeah. and that informed, that became the visitor's experience. It became, you know, we never, we never used, uh, you know, outside help to build these things. We did it all internally, and yeah. so same thing, you know. No, you know. that's cool. I, I do love the fact that there'll be the control that you'll have, and then the the people that are getting the liquid will be able to to see that as you add more customers in and, and grow. The, that was just something that popped in my head. I was like, I wonder if these guys have thought about. It. Obviously, you all thought. Yeah, about it's it. just not keeping the gold standard. Yeah. Okay, we made something that's not so good. Well, we're going to keep that for reference and for training on organoleptic sensory. We made something that's gold standard. What we what we consider this is what we strive for every day in production, and then everything in between, just so we can start training from an organoleptic standpoint and a machine learning standpoint from a chemical analysis. What's that mean in the future on the aging process? Does it age out or does it stay there we can start looking at that whole library of stuff and just not from a sales perspective yeah no that's good it's that's like good. catching those barrels when they're right right like you know oh this one's going to go too far let's yeah. but catch them when they're wrong also yeah too. Yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah and that's actually a big piece of it and you know as john mentioned and that is you know making sure that you're providing all that information to the customer we don't just tell the customer when we've done something great you know you've got to work with them completely transparently to show them Everything you've done right, you've done wrong, how you correct it. I mean, that's how you go to a facility that is, you know, extremely well run and managed for your, your customers. And that that's built in from day one with mm. what we do. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm running out of questions because I've got all my nerdy details done. Scott, <laughs> you, you, no, it, it, this has been a lot of fun. I mean, it's just seeing it in person and and how it's been designed with little waste, you know, little waste built into the process. And that's just any chore, you know, any task, you have avenues to get diverted to, you know, waste, expend en energy. Here, it seems like, you know, streamlined, very efficient, very, you know, you're not consuming extra energy that you, then you need to. Very automotive manufacturing-esque. Uh, I worked at, uh, Toyota was a vendor of mine for a long time, partner. And everything had a purpose where it was. There was no wasted movement, try to build the best ergonomics, like all of those things. And so it's like you all have added, you know, what's been really good in production from other businesses, what's been really good in food manufacturing. It's, it's really cool how you've borrowed um, to improve what the, the American, the American spirit, right? Like bourbon, but, and then also rye whiskey. I'm sure you'll do American single malt. Like there's a lot of opportunity to do a lot Everything. of things. Everything. I'll tell you to that point is in, you know, very rarely in life do you get the opportunity to do something all over again. Yeah. And so that was this opportunity for myself, for John, for Dan, for the founders of Bardstown. And what we have taken, I thought actually looking back, Bardstown was going to be it for me. Like that would be where I poured everything into. This is at Whiskey House is actually the, that. And because we were able to take everything we learned from there, John has taken everything he's learned from his advanced food manufacturing background and distilling. Uh, I've taken everything from Bardstown. Dan Lynn has taken everything from his background there and everything from a financial standpoint. And we have put it into this. And I, and I think it's what you said there is absolutely spot on. Yeah. We have taken, you know, our collective knowledge plus all of the other people we have added to this. Yeah, I'll say what we don't know. We've hired the people that do know <laughs> exactly. and the people that can tell us what we're doing wrong and what we're doing right, right, right off the bat. Yeah. Exactly. So. And that's part of it is that we're not figuring that out. We know where we need to supplement. And that team of 14 you're talking about now, plus all of the new vendors that we brought on in designing and building this facility of work with Busick Construction, this is the culmination of putting together absolutely everything we've learned. Well, big piece of that is knowing what you don't know yeah. and supplementing it immediately. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to do all of that. And, and that's when I say Whiskey House will transform this part of the market. This is a transformative business. Whiskey House is going to change contract manufacturing and distillation fundamentally uh, going forward. Yeah. And I think you can see, you'll see ripple effects of this internationally too, because we were chatting like contract distilling is not new. Like look, go look at Ireland. If you want to know what contract distilling is, uh, there's a little thing called Middleton. They produce 
everything. Um, but there's so many brands because they do custom, they do a lot of the stuff. And so it's cool to see it come to America where there is such a boom of whiskey in general. It doesn't matter what style, it's just a boom of whiskey and, and you ought to be able to help that uh, and usher that into the next evolution is, is pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming and spending uh, the morning yeah. with us. Yeah, no, we, we really appreciate it and we look forward to to seeing this thing when it's finished. No, and I'll just add this, this podcast is pretty special to me because it's my first podcast in over three years oh, and the nice. first one I've done under the Whiskey House umbrella. So, awesome. Let's yeah. go. No better podcast host to uh, do with you guys. I appreciate we that. We appreciate yeah. that, man. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us. Um, thanks, everybody, for listening. And be on the lookout for the updates uh, with Whiskey House. Uh, I know your all's PR team is awesome, and they'll help push all that information out, and we'll, we'll be covering it right along with them. So until next time, guys, cheers. 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 Thank you. Thanks, thank you. guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Bourbon Lens. Make sure you're connected with Scott and I via social media on Instagram, X, and Facebook. We'd love to connect. And if you're more the professional type, follow us over on LinkedIn. If you want to know more about Bourbon Lens, make sure you're subscribed to our weekly newsletter, The Weekly Pour. For exclusive content and more, check out Patreon. Follow us there at Bourbon Lens. And last but not least, on your favorite podcast listening app, make sure you're subscribed because every Monday, Scott and I release a podcast and we would love to have you here listening to the newest features and the newest whiskey news. And until next time, Cheers.